Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Side Hustle Club podcast. Today, I'm really excited because we have our first returning guest ever. I don't know if anyone here remembered episode 10. And I think this was released back in like late 2020, maybe early 2021, but it's been like two years now. And we have Miss Ruby Sparks. Okay, her last name isn't actually Sparks, but we'll just call her Ruby Sparks. So we have Ruby Sparks back on the show. I am so excited because whenever anyone mentions, oh, I really like this particular guest interview on your show, more often than not, they're referring to episode 10. So for anyone who has not listened to that one, I do highly recommend checking that one out after this episode. But yes, we have Miss Ruby Sparks back on the show. I'm unbelievably excited. She's one of my absolute favorite people that I've met in the coaching industry. And I have had the pleasure of meeting her twice in person at this point. She's in Vancouver. I'm in Singapore now. So I, I feel like we're, we're good friends at this point. But yes, anyways, okay, enough for me. Ruby, could you please tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Hello, hello, Cheryl and Cheryl's audience. First of all, it is so, so, so good to be here again. Thank you for having me. A little about me, actually. My name is actually, like Cheryl was mentioning, Ruby Lynn, not Ruby Sparks. And at the heart of it, you know, I'm a life coach that teaches sales and business fundamentals, as well as energetics to coaches and online business owners, meaning, you know, I teach you how to build a successful business based off of your own definition of success. But not only that, you know, I'm also helping you learn, like how to critically think about the business that you are building. So you're not blindly creating something based off of someone else's blueprint, because here is the thing, guys, right? If you're building something based off of someone else's blueprint, you are going to get burnt out and overwhelmed real fast. And that is a huge reason why people quit or say, you know, business is not for them. And my job as your coach is to keep you in the game. So that is just a little about me and what I do. Cool beans. Okay, so let's dive right into the conversation for today. We actually have, I think, several big themes we are going to cover today. So I'm excited to see where the conversation takes mm-hmm. us. Yeah. Okay, let's start off with a, a starter. Okay, so Ruby, one of your, your biggest strengths um, from what I see is you're really able to like pick up on when someone is like building a business that's not quote unquote like aligned with who they are tell me more about that please yeah okay so Cheryl I I think you know like being able to sniff out bullshit is sniff out bullshit real fast is a superpower of mine and instead of like me telling you you know about it like I'm just going to teach you guys all how to do it because it is super easy okay when you're having a conversation with somebody I can see Cheryl just nodding her head it's like when you're having a conversation I'm like low-key like dying on the inside (laughs) yes um ask yourself this question okay is this person confident in what they're doing and what they're saying I'm going to repeat that again. When you're having a conversation with somebody, right, in your head, don't say it out loud, right? Ask yourself, is this person confident in what they're doing and what they're saying? Because here's the thing. There is fake confidence and we all know it. It's the fake it till you make it strategy, right? But then there is that quiet, grounded confidence that comes from mastery and experience. For example, I see so many people in this space and, you know, because I am a business coach, I pay special attention to business coaches, but I see so many people in the space trying to be a business coach, but they don't have a business background. They don't have a sales background. There is no corporate background. And, and so what you see a lot of people starting out trying to do is they're trying to repurpose something that they've learned from like a course and sell it for like, you know, 500 bucks or a thousand bucks. And the reality is you can sniff that shit out real fast because the ideas did not genuinely come from them. They have not yet lived these experiences that they are trying to teach. And that is the tell, right? When someone is talking to you, are they trying to convince, not you? Are they trying to convince themselves? Because deep down, they're not really aligned. So if you hear and you're having a conversation, you're hearing some somebody and you're, you're, you're hearing them talk and it sounds like they're trying to convince themselves on something. It's like, ooh, some, something is a little off here. Now, 
I do want to put in a small disclaimer for those of y'all that do want to start a coaching business, but you feel like you don't have the necessary experience because I don't want to just kick you in the ass and be like, don't ever do this. No. Um, so, so here's my caveat. If you want to do this you, and you don't have the necessary experience, guess what? Start anyways. Start now. Right. Because here's the thing. You have to work on building that experience. And if that means you're taking on beta clients, and if that means, you know, you don't get paid for a little while while you do this, well, you know what? You know what, guys? Keep your fucking day job, right? This is why you are listening to the Side Hustle podcast specifically, right? Start as a side hustle, keep your day job. Don't have that pressure and learn and build along the way because there is no shortcut around this, okay? Stop looking for the shortcuts. And if that doesn't work for you, if that's not what you want to do, guess what? Find another business model outside of coaching. That's completely okay. That is completely okay. All right. And this is, this is the end of my mini rant here, Cheryl. You know what? When you were mentioning how like when someone is like legit, like genuinely confident in themselves, there's just something you can just tell. That just mm-hmm. reminded me, slight detour, by the way, because um, right now I, I'm currently watching um, this n- new show on Netflix called Physical 100, the spinoff mm. of like Squid Game. And like mm. one thing that like that really stood out to me is like, first of all, like these people are like fitness pros. Like some of them are like literal like Olympic people, right? And they're like world champions at whatever, or like famous YouTubers at fitness mm-hmm. or whatever but like one thing is like I, that I noticed is when they're competing it's so intense yeah. it's not like it's not like yay I'm confident but it's like they're so intense mm-hmm. there's a really intense and cal- like eerily calm focus yeah. to them yeah and like you can just tell like they just want to kick the other person's ass or whatever but like <laughs> But yeah, that that's what I noticed. It's like, and there were a few contestants on the show where like when they were up against someone else, you can kind of tell they were not as confident. And you you can just tell. But the ones who mm-hmm. were legit confident, like, yeah, it's eerily yeah. intense and calm and focused. So I, I really resonated with that point yeah. that you mentioned. Yeah. Um it's, it's that, you know, ground. Sorry. It's I was gonna say, you know, it's it's that grounded confidence that only comes from within. Right. That I think that's what you were saying. It's like, it's eerie because and it, it's intense. And, and, you know, like, have you, if you ever like, if you're ever like in a space with like a coach, that's like really in their element that really knows their shit. Like you, you feel that right there, there is, almost, it's not a pressure, but there is that intensity. Right. But it's not an intensity like, Whoa, but it's like, it's, it's so grounded. It almost, you you're drawn to them. They, it, they have that almost like center of gravity, right. That like they, it pulls people in. And I'm curious now, like When you work with clients who you feel like maybe it's like a new client who just came to you and you have this, you're sniffing out some BS here and you feel like maybe what their current business is, it's just not ground. It's not, either it's not what they should be doing or they're really not grounded in what they're doing. Like, how would you navigate that kind of scenario with a client? Yeah. Well, I'm I'm going to I'm going to give you kind of high level. I'll give you two examples. I'm I'm pretty direct when it comes to them. I'm, I'm like I'm direct in a nice way. But usually I handle these things or usually these things actually they don't even come up once I work with a client. They usually come up like during the discovery call. Like I'm able to like usually during a discovery call I'm able to sniff you out and I I will call you out on it. Like I said, not in an asshole-ish way. I, I come to, I take my discovery calls very seriously because I come to this with so much curiosity, right? So usually clients, you know, who do come and choose to work with me, they're, they're of a certain, I don't even want to say profile, but they're of like almost a certain experience in the sense that, you know, they've already started a business, right? No, no, very rarely is somebody like, Hey, I'm, I'm coming to you and I need you to help me start my business. No, like they've already had a business. They've been at it for like a year or so, you know, they've may they may have like taken a course or like they've gone like coaching elsewhere. Like that's usually, and then, you know, it hasn't gone them anywhere. And that's, that's usually when then they decide to, you know, want to work with me. And so knowing that, you know, you've been doing this for uh, over a year or so, right. When we're having this conversation, when I hear something that doesn't line up, I usually ask about it. So, so let me give you the example. One of, one of the clients, this was actually a client that, um, 
I've been working with for a little while. I had a client who branded herself at the beginning as a career coach, right? But here's the thing. She hated corporate. Like she could not wait to get out of fucking corporate. So that's like a really obvious disconnect. You do not want to be hating on corporate while coaching people on starting their career in a corporate environment, right? So after some work, we pivot her over to like systems and productivity. And she's a fucking beast at it. Like she is so brilliant at it. Right. Um, and, and so that was like a really like obvious kind of disconnect. Once you like talk to the client, you like, you realize they want nothing to do with corporate and like, this is where their superpowers are. So, so that was somebody that I've been working with for a while. We, we went through the process of doing that. Somebody else, actually, this actually happened during a discovery call. Okay. This girl, she was a business coach. She came to me wanting to build her business coaching practice. And you can just tell like something was off, right? And it's just, I poked a bit and, and she later, she told me like during this call, you know, well, I, I started business coaching because my previous coach told me that's what you have to do to make money. And I was like, what? <laughs> right? I was like, I was like, what? And, and so during our time to also because I challenged was like why do you want to be a business coach like what's your background like why are you passionate about this and she's like oh like somebody told me to do this right her coach told her to do that and so during our time together we completely reinvented her business right in in the way in the sense that it wasn't like me it, it, it wasn't like I ended up telling her what to do it wasn't anything like that it was more so you know me guiding her to come to her own conclusions that she actually realized she didn't want to build a coaching business at all like no like she thought she did and then she realized like all of the things she wanted to do had nothing to do with coaching right and so she realized what really did light her up was becoming a content and a digital creator and now she's working with brands she started her agency she's like she's fucking flourishing so like these are kind of just two examples like if you just pay attention to what your people are saying you'll pick up on these things and and the next step is simply to just have the courage to like ask them about it yeah you know what that that sparks another question in me and this might be a slight pivot or hard pivot Mm -hmm. but um you mentioned how like or I guess like we can a lot of us might agree that there's a when it comes to coaches and perhaps business coaches more specifically, there's a big emphasis on like, you need to do this and this and this to make money. But like when it comes to whether it's business coaches or like just the online coaching industry in general, do you feel like there's anything lacking in the market right now when it comes to helping people build their businesses? Like what's, or like, yeah, what's lacking in the market right now? Uh, Many things. (laughs) But, you know, I, I let's let's maybe talk high level and then we can maybe like dive deep just a little bit. Right. I, I think really as a society and as a collective and maybe we as business coaches, we see this earlier on. Right. As a collective, we are undergoing an awakening process where people are going to actually start to tune into like what's actually important to them. And I think perhaps people aren't necessarily realizing that this is what is happening, right? We are moving away from the one size fits all to more of the unique and individual model and way of doing things. Perhaps, you know, the idea of like the niche of one, right? But, but not only that from a collective perspective, needing to pay attention to how our individual choices and actions affects the collective. But to your specific question, Cheryl, you know, what I'm seeing in particular as lacking in the market right now, actually, it it stems from that because it plays and trickles into branding and positioning. Okay. And when I say, and I, when I say branding, I don't necessarily mean like logos or colors or like SWOT analysis or like audience. Um, it's, It's not that like that is a part of it. But when I talk and teach about it specifically, I mean, what I really mean is, you know, like being able to tap into your essence and your unique energetic signature, right? And I know some coaches, like they, they try, they tap into this with style as a medium. It's a beautiful medium, 
I see it also as being deeply attuned into who you are, what you're about, knowing like what specific energies, what specific archetypes you're embodying and like really flexing those like dormant superpowers. And so for the listeners out there that might be confused, like what's the dormant superpower, right? It's the things that make you go like, there's no way somebody needs help with this. Like it's super easy, basic and boring. Like and people are looking at you like you're crazy. Like, no, this is super hard, right? Like those are like super dormant. Those are like dormant superpowers that you might not even realize you have and like bringing those to the surface as well. I, I really love that you mentioned um, this and, and brought the conversation um, to the table. That, um, and you mentioned like some coaches might like use style as like um, a tool to like tap into that. That just reminded me of um, how, an excuse, I don't know if anyone can hear like the airplane going on in the background, but it's pretty loud where I am. But anyways, um, the airplane's so moving past us, I think. Anyways, um, we're not editing this out. But I, I was thinking about how like, and you mentioned like there might be different energies that you want to tap into. And that reminded me of how like, um, as of late, I'm noticing how like there are definitely certain energies that I would like to embody depending on the different thing that I want to do. For example, like when I am or like or when I want to shift away from a certain energy, for example, um, on the top of my mind, like when I'm feeling, let's say, comparisons, right? Mm -hmm. One thing that helps me one energy when I'm feeling comparisons I want to tap into when I'm in that state is bad bitch Cheryl energy mm -hmm. so like I literally have a playlist a k-pop like a badass very yeah. hyped up k-pop playlist that I like to um listen to when I am noticing like I need to tap into that badass bad bitch Cheryl energy oh, I <laughs> and like I that. also like I also like to um like literally another tool that I like to use is like I like to like just like chug ice cold water to, mm -hmm. to bring me into that state as quickly as I can so I, I like that you mentioned like um uh you 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 brought us to the the topic of like the energies that you might want to tap into and also like start to think about the tools or mechanisms that can help you get into that yeah any any thoughts on that Ruby oh my god I have I have so many thoughts um this is this is a little bit of a tangent and then I'm gonna go back to like original thoughts and stuff um the, 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 the little bit of tangent, I think this is going to be super helpful for anybody that's listening is whether or not you, you realize what you're doing, Cheryl is like when, you know, when you're feeling comparison and you want to tap into like bad bitch Cheryl energy, you're doing something called, and you use the word um, correctly state, you're changing your state. Right. And so when we think about state, we think about it in a triangle with the word like state in the middle, right. We have language, we have physiology. We have focus, right? And this is something my coach taught me, um, made popular by the Robbins Institute, right? And so what you're doing, right, is you're noticing, I'm feeling comparison, I'm changing my focus, right? And then what you're doing is you're actually changing your state physio physiologically, you're chugging cold water, you're giving a shock to your system. Now I'm stepping into bad bitch barrel, uh, Cheryl, right? And then you're also changing your focus and your language, by listening to the K-pop, you're infusing yourself with a language. And this is how you quickly snap out of state, right? And this is something that anybody um, in your audience or anybody listening to this can do. Remember, focus, physiology, and language. When you're feeling shitty, get up, like go for a walk, or like take a cold shower, right? Put on your favorite playlist, like pump yourself up. This actually is proven like, you know, NLP wise to shift your state and your energy. That was not what I was planning to talk about, but you talked about this. So I'm, I'm, I'm putting that down here. Yeah, when you said state and that 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 uh, brought up ring up a ring a bell that rang yeah. a bell. Anyways, yeah. I thought of like how water has three different states of like liquid, solid, mm -hmm. and wait, ice, water, evaporated air. air. Yeah, Steam. And, Steam. And, I th and I thought of how like there's these the, there's these memes that say like cats are liquid and I was like if cats can be liquid too we can definitely shape shift into different states as quickly as a cat can mm -hmm. but yeah um let's tie back to the, the conversation of branding um yeah. any other thoughts you want to add about branding yeah okay so like I I love the 
I, I love branding. I love energy. And I love specifically like talking about archetypes because they're just such a, they're just such a fun thing to talk about. And Cheryl, you and I, we, we've talked about archetypes quite a bit, just, you know, in our private WhatsApp conversations. Um, but I think what might be fun specifically for our chat today is like, I feel like because we've known each other for a while, I think it might be fun for me to kind of tell you what I thought like the Cheryl theory brand archetypes was before and like where I think it's going to end up. Like I love doing like predictions, right? This is part of like what I geek out about. So if yeah, you're, if you're into it, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. 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 Where do you want to okay. take us? Okay. So like, for those that don't know brand archetypes, right, it's, you know, it's a theory that was created based on like 12 different types of archetype forms, just type in brand archetypes, you know, in, in the computer, you'll be able to see it, right. Um, but, but for those that do know, from my perspective, right, my perspective of Cheryl theory, I would say, you know, circa like 2020, that was like when I knew you, right, to like, maybe like almost like early oh 2022, <laughs> like, I saw you as the uh -oh. <laughs> very like sage and every, every man, everyday mm -hmm. man archetype. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so let me, let me explain to you what those are. Right. So the sage is like, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, it's very cerebral and the brand essence of it. It's, it's, it's intelligence, right? It, it focuses on intelligence and wisdom, right? It's research. And there's almost this like hint of meticulousness there. And I think it made so much sense for you because like back then, if anybody remembered Trill back then, you know, she was doing her PhD and helping other people start her, their side hustles. Right. Like, so that that energy attracted a very certain crowd now this every man or as i'm going to call it every human right um it, it gives a very comforting energy so think of brands like ikea right think of brands like craft or like dove right like people just relate to them like nespresso right it gives you like nice cozy feelings and this brand value specifically values community and belonging regardless of status it doesn't matter who you are like you're you're um you belong so so that's what i kind of pinpointed or thought or saw cheryl you know as before and before I go into where I think you're going to head up, like, what are your thoughts about that? Would you say that was accurate? Would you be like, yeah, not really. Like, I want to hear your thoughts. Yeah, for sure. I, I definitely see um, the, the early stages, especially 2020, even 2021, I'd say that um, those were really what I really identified with. And I guess at the time, unknowingly was really expressing in my, just expressing in the way I communicated and articulated and enunciated my words just a way that like just basically the energy you could feel from me when I was mm -hmm. showing up online for lack of a better word um but I'm curious to see what you will predict for me Ooh. moving forward because I think there were likely some shifts um that happened maybe in 2022 and likely it's carrying over to 2023 yeah. because personal life events happen my philosophies my viewpoints on life definitely a lot of things has crystallized and there are some shifts so I'm curious to see what you predict for the Cheryl Theory brand yeah okay this is, this is gonna be so juicy and and you know when I when I talk about this I'm seeing this almost like as a process of evolution right like I'm a huge Pokemon nerd so I think of everything in terms of like Pokemon evolution haha -ha. um but okay here 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 it is okay like I think you're gonna end up at least in the next couple of years as a creator um as a hero hero first actually hero slash creator archetype okay your everyday human archetype is actually going to grow and evolve into a hero archetype and not one is better than the other it's just how it grows right because and and this is how i'm seeing it evolve because the everyday man or the everyday kind of brand and the hero yeah they, they have similar stems around like doing the right thing and helping others. Like think of like, think of your favorite Disney hero, right? They all have like very stern like values, but the hero, this is where I see show really evolving. The hero archetype has the drive to achieve certain mastery around something and leave a mark. That's the, that's the core differentiator of like a hero archetype, right? And your sage, your sage is gonna grow into the creator. Okay. And I think, I think a couple of things around this, right? Because I think the sage in itself, because it 
value so much wisdom and clarity seeking, it almost feels like that brand archetype right now, looking back, it almost feels like it's, it's, it's looking backwards, right? It's, it's like, Hey, here's the research. Here is the knowledge that has already been accumulated. I'm presenting it to you. Right. That's what, that's what it felt like, you know, circa 2020. Whereas I see what I'm seeing right now is the desire for your brand to move towards innovation. And that is the hallmark of a creator archetype, right? And innovation in the way that sparks creativity and ways of thinking and doing things that haven't been done before. So that's how I'm seeing, you know, almost a backwards looking sage evolving into a forwards looking innovative creator. So that's my prediction. What are your thoughts? I, I really resonate with that. And um, because I now have some basic understanding of the uh, different archetypes, I definitely will agree uh, with your predictions. And I think the the main reason, especially for the hero one, um, the reason why I see that as being very accurate for me, at least for the next while until who knows what happens next, is because um, for those who may not know, in 2022, I uh, actually quit my PhD to move to Singapore and start a new chapter with my partner and become a full-time coach. Um, and I think because that, and that was my second time quitting graduate school. And I think at this point, it really solidified in my identity that I am someone who is willing to make courageous decisions in my life and career, even if it bruises my ego over and over and over again, I'm willing to make those decisions. And I think that's why the hero archetype really resonates with me because now, at least for the time being, I can see my mission for my business is clearly to help people create their own career, their dream career and dream life through the vehicle of their business, not necessarily the career that they thought they were going to pursue because their, their Asian parents, for example, mm-hmm. wanted them to pursue it or because their, their smart ass classmates back in the day are doing it. But really you're creating your own dream career and life through the vehicle of your business. And that doesn't mean you have to like quit your nine to five to make this a career. You can make a career even as a side hustle, but that's really the, the 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 mission and vision that I clearly see for the Cheryl Theory brand moving forward. So that's why the hero archetype makes perfect sense. And regarding the creator archetype, I can also really see that being a more and more prominent part of my brand because the podcast in particular, the Styles of Club podcast, it's now a part of my identity. Like actually, fun fact for those of you who may not know, actually, I don't think I've shared this on the podcast before. But my father-in-law actually introduces me as, this is Cheryl, my daughter-in-law, and she's a podcaster. Ah. And that hit me. I was like, I'm a podcaster. I create, I'm a content creator. I'm a creator of, of, of ideas and like content. And I think that has really done something for my identity when I realized that the podcast was one of the reasons why I was able to grow my business. So, um, so seamlessly in a way. And this is something that I want to help more people do is to lead into their creator identities and those te- those natural gifts that they have and share more of their story. So I definitely agree that like, yeah, I think the hero and the creator, it makes a lot of sense. And I think you're spot on. Yeah, I'm pretty good with these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now I'm really curious, Ruby. Uh-huh. So like, how, like, for those who are listening to this and they're like, okay, but like, how do I know what archetype I am like like how would I so there's like a list of like 12 archetypes I think some some lists have like more than 12 but like when someone is looking through these lists and they're like trying to figure out like okay which archetype am I like how would like what kind of like skill or like way of thinking or lens do they have to like interpret the list from in order to identify to figure out like what they identify with like are there any certain skills or mindsets you think are helpful to branding or building a business in general? Yeah, I mean, I think there are certain key skills. I think if you're just starting out, right? Or we'll talk about if you're just starting out versus like if you're a little bit more advanced, okay? If you're just starting out, like go look at the list, like read the description and like see which one resonates. It, honestly, it does not have to be any harder than that. You didn't have to, you didn't have to do like what I did with Cheryl, like an in-depth analysis of like why, blah, blah, blah. Like you didn't, you don't have to do any of that shit. Like when you're just starting out, like look at a list and like pick like one or like a max, like two, right. That, that like really like, oh yeah, like this, this is the business that I want to build and just know, and I always tell my clients this, 
this goes with branding archetypes, but this also goes with business, right? Like where you start is not where you're going to end up. You might start as a business coach and you might end up like, you know, doing content for a little while. And then you might end up as like an influencer, like, you know, writing books. You, you never know. Same with your brand archetype. So when you're just starting out, no big deal. Go take a look at the list, learn a little bit more about them, see what jumps out, see what resonates, right? When you're a little bit kind of um, more, I would say deeper into business, right? What I always love to teach my people is the skill of critical thinking. And also like for me, I, I really love to write, right? So almost like the skill of like writing as well as like critical thinking kind of meshed into one. I, I see, um, I, and it's going to sound so cheesy, but whatever. I, I see writing, you know, writing as the canvas to which I apply the paint of critical thinking. And that, that in itself, I think is of the utmost importance. And let's, let's dive into that because I think I, I love reading Ruby's writing. For example, um, I think for those of you who follow Ruby on IG stories, especially you'll see that sometimes she has like these long, 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 long as in like, you know, when you tap onto her bubble, it'll be like small little dots because there's so many stories because she has so much to say. She's written so much. You'll know that like, you know, um, Ruby is a, she's she has a knack for writing but also for those of you who are not subscribed to her emails which she doesn't send that much but she really? writes some really good emails like they're so fun for me like the word I like to the way I, I interpret Ruby's emails is they're just fun to read and they really make you think it's like it's very thought-provoking but it's also just like it's just nice to read it makes you feel like <laughs> she's funny and she makes Aww. you think so like I really like um uh, Ruby's writing but anyways so like how this is a big question but like I feel like the, the next natural question that people might have right now is like okay Ruby but like how do I develop skill of critical thinking or mm -hmm. be a better writer yeah and and you know I think again I, I like to like help you think about things like on a high level and then kind of like almost like break it down a little bit right and so for me I'm, I'm saying right now, you know, I think hands down, like writing and sales specifically, if you want to build a business, writing and sales are sort of the two skills you have to master if you want to have a successful business, okay? Um, writing because it is that canvas for critical thinking. Because here's the thing, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, developing the skill of writing and sales is essentially what you are actually developing is effective communication. That's what you're developing. That's a skill you're developing because you ain't going to sell shit if your people ain't picking up what you're putting down, hands down. Like this is no other way around it. Okay. And effective communication, I think, or what people in the space likes to call it for me, it's like, it's like, it's thought leadership and thought leadership in essence is resonance and it's influence. Do you resonate and can you influence I personally use writing as the medium to think better, okay? And the reason why writing down your ideas, and so, and so now we're getting into the how, write down your ideas, right? The reason why that's so important, just first, that is the first step, writing it down and getting it out, out of your brain, onto paper, if you feel like it, into the internet of things, right? Um, internet verse get, is so important is because if those ideas stay floating in your head, number one, you're not developing those critical thinking skills. And number two, ideas in your head, guess what happens to ideas in your head? It becomes a fleeting thought. It becomes a passing thought. It never forms into something concrete. You want to write or speak, you know, we can voice record. Some of my people, they're, they're talkers, they're not writers, same fucking thing, okay? Getting it out makes it concrete. Because, and once something is concrete, you can then manipulate it. You can play with, you can pull it apart. You can connect the dots. Oh, I wrote this thing down here today. And oh, guess what? Five days ago, I had a similar thought about something here. And then like two days later, oh, all of these things are now connecting, right? This is how you create individual thought, individual, um, what, what is the individual organic, unique thoughts. You have to get it down first. It helps you connect the dots. It helps you see patterns, right? All of this is with the goal so you can communicate with depth and intention. That's why, that's why reading things are fun, 
when there is depth and when there is intention versus like copy and paste, right? Yeah, and that reminds me of how like back in, I guess, 2018, 2019, there was like a surge of like people selling like copywriting templates or like yes. email scripts or like what is a dm script sales call yeah, scripts yeah. like uh-huh. there was a huge like no there was no shortage of people selling those things um but as you said like there was no um depth and uh, resonance i think you said depth and res or sorry intention intention that was the word you use um because when you're just plugging and playing words into people's scripts there is like how deep can you really go when you're using someone else's words and how much attention can you argue there there to be in that um that copy that you write down um but i guess i guess you would agree that like perhaps the skill of um writing and even critical thinking may not be as taught it's not mm-hmm. really taught in the industry um but could you tell us a little bit about like how these two skills has played a role in your business and in your clients' clients' clients', clients businesses? Yeah, yeah, you know, and 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 I I think I would almost like just edit that just a teeny bit. I think, you know, writing is taught, but it is taught in a very almost like structure like technical writing way, right? And we don't want that. Like you don't need that. Um, unless you want to be a technical writer or, you know, it's, it's taught almost in a way it's like you throw spaghetti in a wall and see what sticks. I think what is actually missing right now is utilizing writing as a vehicle, as a means to critically think for yourself. That is the skill I think is under prioritized. Right. And I, and, and I think it's under prioritized um, because number one, people aren't teaching it, but also two, I don't think people realize that that's what they can do with writing. Right. I think a lot of people in the space, like what you were saying, Cheryl, is, you know, seeing as having to write, not as a means to develop your own thought, your own intellectual property, your own, you know, thought leadership and, you know, exercising a critical thinking muscle. People aren't thinking of it as that way. They're seeing it as a checkbox that they have to cross off amongst the millions of other things they have to do. And exactly like you were saying, you can tell this is exactly the case by the vast amount of people who are, you know, making a lot of money selling done for you templates, done for you captions, DM scripts, fill in the blank, whatever, right? You can also see and notice, right? So if you're new, like I'm, I'm coming for you. If you're new, right? And you think you need to hire a copywriter, don't hire a copywriter. You don't need that. You don't like, you don't need that, okay? Like you don't need to hire a copywriter until you made like the, your first 100K, okay? And, and I under I understand where some of these people might be coming from. You know, they want to hire a copywriter because they feel like they're not good at writing. Writing that off, pun intended, is almost like saying, you know, I'm not good at communicating with my audience. So here, copywriter, you do it. And I need to operate in my zone of genius. Like, bitch, you as the CEO in the face of your company, you need to know how to talk to your people. You need to know how to communicate with your people. If you do not develop that skill as the business owner, you, your business is going to eventually become obsolete because your thought is just going to be the same as everybody else's. And that's why it is so important to learn these skills. It's fucking fundamental, Cheryl. Yeah. As it is, you said that, I was like, chat GPT is going to come for you if you don't practice the skill of like writing because you know I know that the the words leadership and resonance is something that you you talk a lot about um and like if you don't know how to write and um, you don't know how to think yeah and think you're not going to be able to really be a leader and have that resonance that that you're going to be replaced by chat gbt let's be honest yeah exactly right and so going back to your original question about like how my business and how my clients almost like utilize this well let me tell you all of my clients you know they don't get a buy on this right like there is not a world where ruby gives you a script and be like follow the script like that has never happened they they have to learn how to effectively think and communicate for themselves with their people okay and 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 let me tell you i mean on top of all of the reasons why i've already said but let me tell you why this is especially important in a coaching business okay my clients they learn these skills right? Critical thinking, effective communication, like uh, writing or, you know, getting your ideas out. Um, They learn all of these skills through coaching with me 
because these skills tie together. Okay. Why is it important for, why is it important, especially for running a coaching business is because guess what? Good coaches ask great questions. Good coaches ask great questions and your ability to ask great questions. Guess where that comes from? That comes from practicing questioning. Where do you think practicing questioning comes from? It comes from being able to critically think about what is around you, being able to discern what your clients are saying, and to be able to help your clients see alternative pathways. All of these skills, guys, they play together. That is why it's so important. Resonance and influence is not only a means to sell your product or service. It's one benefit of it, right? At the heart of it, knowing how to create resonance, knowing how to create influence, why that's important is because it allows you to sell your ideas. Why is that important for coaching? It's because for you as a coach, you need to be able to influence your client's way of thinking. So they will actually do what they need to do instead of being stuck in a loop. If you can't influence your client's way of thinking, you won't be an effective coach, right? And do you, do you have to be a great writer for that? No, you don't have to be a great writer, but you do need to be able to critically think. You do need to be able to discern patterns. Those are the skills you learn through writing. Writing is one of the best tools to learn how to do that, okay? Are there other ways? Yes, there's other ways, blah, blah, blah. There's a reason why, you know, something like journaling is so effective. So on top of your daily journaling practice, now what I'm just going to tell you guys is just add a layer of critical thinking on top of it. Like when you're writing things down and you're, you're noticing a thought, like question it. Question like, you know, where did this thought come from, right? Did it come from me? Did it come from somebody else? Is this thought true, right? Can I do something differently? So I want a little spiel there. I'm going to just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little pause. <laughs> I loved it. But, um, um, Maybe the final question I want to ask in relation to this topic before we start to round out for today is I feel like a question that might come up for the audience right now is, okay, Ruby, I hear you. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. I get it. I see the importance of these different skill sets and getting out of my head and actually writing something and perhaps even translating into digital form. Okay. I get it. But, but how is it supposed to look like or sound like, like, yeah. do I have to sound like Ruby? Do I have to sound like Cheryl? Like, like basically I think the question is like, can like what, I think the question that might come up naturally for the audience is like, what is the standard I should be aspiring towards? Is there a certain like mm. voice that I'm supposed to, do I need to sound, oh, that's the question. Do I need to sound authoritative and leader-like in my writing? I think that's the question I want to ask. No. You certainly don't. <laughs> so no. Do I need to sound like Cheryl? No. Do you need to sound no? <laughs> sound like sound yeah. like yourself. Like, yeah. bro, sound like yourself, right? And and okay, I'm not I'm not trying to be like facetious or anything. Oh, <laughs> let me let me share with you a little bit about my process. Okay. Um, and then let me share with you a little bit about my process. And also know that you're never gonna sound like me. You're you're if you're you could try. And you're just not going to have a good time. You're never going to sound like Cheryl. You can try and sound like, like, I will never be able to sound like Cheryl. Like, could you imagine? Like, I just, I am not that calm. <laughs> could you imagine <laughs> Cheryl trying to sound like me? Like, like. You'd be like, what the, what the heck, Cheryl? <laughs> Who are you trying yeah, to be? Like, her, your, her audience will like be really scared. Right. Um, <laughs> and, and so, you know, I, I think this, what Cheryl is saying exactly is really the heart of it, right? As we're here, and it's almost ironic, while we're here talking about branding, archetypes, what makes you unique, blah, 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 all that bullshit, um, as well as critical thinking, the natural question is like, how can I do it to somebody else's standard? Well, what the fuck is your own standard? That, that might be the first question you want to ask. What is good enough for you? What is good enough to get you started? You can always improve. Where you start is not where you're going to end up, right? You can always improve. Um, for me, right, my process is super simple. If I have an idea, I just, I write it down, right? Then I'll sound it out. So like, I literally, I'll type and then I'll like, I'll write out what it is that I typed out. Like I'll read out what I wrote and I'll see if it sounds good. And then I'll go back and I'll edit. And like that process just happens. And those are sort of like for the pieces that see the light of day. So if you ever tune into what I do, you know, it feels like, if it, if, if it feels like I'm talking to you, it is because I literally am like, I'll write something and then I'll say it, right? 
and and I write with the person in mind. It's a very simple process. It's not like it's not rocket science. Oh, Chippendales here. Um, For those of you watching the video, there's a cat. There's a cat. Everyone, watch the video. Come back to the video. Oh, it's walking across the street. Hi, Chip. Chip and Dale. Oh. The, yeah. the people listening on Spotify and iTunes are like, what the hell? <laughs> What's just going on? Tune in. Just got to tune, tune in. Tune into the YouTube, please. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm. for, for my for my private thoughts, I've already um I've already talked about, I've already alluded to this a little bit, right? I, I journal a lot. I just I write a lot. It, it's a practice. It, it's a skill like everything else, right? I don't use necessarily use journal prompts. Rather, what I do like to do that to help me think more critically is I'll write down what comes to mind. And then when I notice a thought, like I was saying earlier, when I notice a thought that might not be serving me, I'll actively question it. Where did this thought come from? Right? That, that's the first question. Where did this thought come from? Is this true? Right? Can I do it better? Is it, can I do it more effectively? It is simply the process of actually having to do that. And so for you guys listening here, it's like, okay, yeah, yeah, like that's so simple. It's simple. It's effective. It works. You just, you have to do it. You have to start. Right. And it's not to my standards, not to Cheryl's standard. What is your standard? What is the thing that is going to allow you to just get started? Yeah. And I, I think um, to your point, Ruby, I think as you were mentioning how you, you were describing like your, your method or your your, your preferred method of like getting your thoughts out onto paper. For me, um, I like to call myself a keyboard warrior. Like I'm just like, ta -ta 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 type. so like I, the way, and I think like me and Ruby have very different writing styles and just our, the way our, our brains work is also very different. So uh, whereas Ruby's style is more like talking to you because she has a specific person in mind, I'm just like typing all my feels. <laughs> I'm like, I guess like you can say I'm like a blogger kind of kind of writer. Like I, I I've I've gotten comments before where people are like, yeah, like your things are kind of deep and like a lot of feels. And I'm like, yeah, like I can often get really into my feels and like really share about the thought processes and like the feelings that I navigate and really explain it from that angle. And that's the way I add that depth and that's the way my resonance come out in my own writing. Whereas Ruby is really like having a person in mind oftentimes, right? So I think like to your point, like everyone can have different definitions or different mm -hmm. preferred styles and we can also like flip-flop between styles sometimes but like it really depends on what you're writing and what you're trying to communicate for that day or in that moment of time yeah and and I I know you know like we say like writing as a medium and I love using writing as a medium but I also understand like I have I have a couple of clients that they don't love writing so how do you develop critical thinking without writing I I tell them to like voice record like voice record just to get their ideas out right? Again, like what is going to get it out from your brain to, to out here where it's concrete, whatever your medium is, however you do it, like do that. Yeah. Awesome. Yes, yes, yes. Everyone has different communication styles. Just work with your brain and how you naturally, what your natural communication strengths are. All right, cool. Okay. So we are now nearing the end of our conversation for today. So just like any other guest interview, we're going to finish off with a fun question. So Ruby, we're going to talk about Pokemon. <laughs> I'm curious, Ruby, how are you such a pro? And I know you're a pro because not only do you talk a lot about Pokemon, you make a lot of references to Pokemon, but like that time a few months ago when I was visiting you and I was over at your place and like there was this game where you have to guess the Pokemon like just the shadow, the shape, the outline, right? You were able to accurately name every single Pokemon. So like, I'm just curious, like, how are you such a pro? And like, how did you first even like develop your current relationship with Pokemon? I'm just Oh nosy. my gosh. Okay. So like, I do want to say like, I'm only the pro for like the first generation of Pokemon. There are nine generations now. Um, my claim to fame is only like gen one. I'm a little salty because like I got a question wrong for trivia and I got it right and I changed it like that's just gonna haunt me forever um I don't know it's just something that I developed like when when I was a kid right so Pokemon in case you guys didn't know came to North America in 1998 right so I was eight years old back then it was on anime and I remember watching it like on the tv I was like oh my god what is this this is like the best thing ever and I just I, I fell in love with it and you know the Game Boy happened and so like I got the Game Boy right I had the book and back then the book was like uh the 151 Pokemon and 
I like I studied all of them and back then I don't know if you guys remember if you guys are like poker nerds like me there was this thing called the poker rap right and and so like they teach you the different pokemon through the poke rap and so you learn all 151 pokemon through the poker rap so like there there was just a lot of like fun pieces around that um pokemon's been going so for some pokemon trivia right now pokemon's been going on for 25 years started in 1996 by satoshi tajiri and there is a 1008 pokemon y'all know that 1008 1008 that's a lot of pokemon yeah i was like no way in hell i'm gonna be able to remember (laughs) all of those you probably can if you really wanted to Mm. (laughs) and my energy doing other things (laughs) yeah you got a business to run you got people to help clients to coach (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know what that that brings up my own pokemon memory um I remember when I was young, I was watching it on TV as well one, one day and my dad, because my dad was like really strict and he's like really academic focused. And he's like, why are you watching TV? Pokemon is useless. And like in my head, I remember very distinctly, I was thinking, but it's teaching me skills of friendship and perseverance. And I was really sad for that day. I was like, my dad just doesn't get it. Pokemon teaches these values. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yes, I, I may not be as a hardcore fan um as ruby is but i do have an appreciation for what it's taught me when i was younger (laughs) yeah yes okay and before we wrap up for today ruby give us a controversial or unpopular opinion about pokemon i would love to know okay okay so like can like my controversial pokemon opinion be that i don't have a controversial unpopular opinion like like what do you want me to say like pokemon is better like pokemon is better than <laughs> digimon like everybody knows that already like it's not controversial okay. like that is set okay. in stone right? you want to fight me on this i will fight you on this <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying i'm just trying to stir some shit here shit that 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 that's it's the stirring. one that will stir the shit okay cool well thank you ruby <laughs> for being very neutral I guess um but anyways before I wrap up where can people find you and how can people work with you very important question Mm, okay so people can find me best on Instagram okay at ruby sparks with an s dot co so r-u-b-y s-p-a-r-k-s dot co that's how you can find me on Instagram right and when you're there click on the link sign up for my newsletter when you get mail from me, it's like absolute Christmas. You don't always get it, but when you do, it's like Christmas. Um, did you ask me how people can work with me? I don't remember. Yes. How can the people okay. work with you? Okay. Okay. So right now I have two main offers. The first is a private one-on-one coaching. And the second is starting, you know, probably a month or so, I will be opening up enrollment for the next round of my mastermind. And that this round is going to be so fucking epic okay so if you're curious about that if you want to work with me um the best way to do so is just hop on instagram send me a dm i'm actually a really really nice person you don't have to be scared yay okay so everyone links in the show notes below of course and definitely do check out episode 10 of the podcast for ruby's og episode on this show it was really good people loved it so i'm sure people love this one too but yeah, episode 10 and episode 112 is featuring Miss Ruby Sparks. Okay, Ruby, thank you so much for being here. And to everyone else, thank you for tuning in. Um, whether you're listening in from the audio podcast or the YouTube video version, I appreciate you all for being here and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone. Bye.